electrons have a much shorter wavelength than light, and this allows objects or features in your sample to be imaged with some nanometer resolution. There are two different types of electron microscopes, scanning electron microscopes, or SEMs, and transmission electron microscopes, TEMs, and there's a huge variety of applications for each. I'm going to talk to you today about the TEM, how it works, and some of the ways it can be used to aid virology research. The main parts of the TEM are the gun, the electromagnetic lenses, removable apertures, the CompuStage, viewing screen and camera in the projection chamber, cold trap, and the vacuum system. The electron gun consists of an electron source the filament, which also acts as the cathode, shield, and anode. A current is run through the filament to heat it, resulting in the emission of electrons from the tip. The high voltage difference between the shield and the anode causes the electrons to accelerate and form a beam. This high tension, or HT, controls the accelerating voltage of the emitted electrons. The higher the accelerating voltage, the higher the resolution, but there is a greater chance of specimen damage plus a reduction in contrast. Right, so the condenser lens system focuses the emitted electrons um, into a coherent beam and controls the dose of electrons on the sample. The specimen on a TEM grid sits in a sample holder which is inserted into the compu stage or eucentric goniometer, a motorized stage used to navigate around the grid. The end of the sample holder sits in the column within the objective lens, which focuses the electrons tra transmitted through it into an image. Contrast is generated by differential scattering of electrons, and then the intermediate and projection lenses further magnify the image. When the electrons hit the phosphorescent screen in the projection chamber, photons are generated which allow the human eye to view it. Images can be recorded with film or now more commonly with a digital camera or a direct electron detector that can be side or bottom mounted. The control panels are used to adjust beam intensity, which is adjusting the condenser lens, focus, which is adjusting the objective lens, magnification, which is adjusting the projection in intermediate lenses, and eucentric height and various alignments. Okay, so TEMs have elaborate pumping systems to ensure that the microscope is operated under a high vacuum. This is necessary to maintain the integrity of the electron beam to avoid arcing between the cathode and the ground and to reduce contamination of column parts. This is helped by the cold trap or anti-contamination device, um, which is filled with liquid nitrogen to cool copper braids, which in turn cool plates that sit above and below the specimen catching contaminants that volatilize from the sample upon exposure to the electron beam. There are numerous ways that TM can be applied to virology research. For example, the subcellular localization of viruses or viral proteins in infected cells, their effect on cellular ultrastructure, and viral transmission through the immunological synapse can all be investigated by embedding cells in resin and imaging thin sections using 2D, and 3D TEM techniques. Isolated viruses can also be imaged in a frozen hydrated state with cryo-TEM and using a technique called single particle analysis where thousands of particles are imaged, a high resolution 3D model of the virus particle can be produced. To screen virus samples, isolated viruses can be negatively stained with salts of heavy metals which scatter electrons and therefore generate contrast, and viewed at room temperature. Proteins of interest can also be immunolabeled, with the secondary antibody having a colloidal gold attachment to allow visualization in the TEM. Negative staining is a quick method for screening isolated virus samples, so quick it takes 10 minutes. The sample is applied to a TEM grid coated with a thin plastic or carbon film which has been treated with the plasma, a process called glow discharge, which is really cool. To increase wettability, quickly expose to a heavy metal solution, typically 2% um, urinal acetate, and this stain surrounds the particles and displaces water in hydrophilic domains, thereby creating negative contrast in the TEM. 
The grid is then air dried and viewed. So our facility does a lot of negative staining work, particularly for the Jenner Institute at Oxford University, and they develop vaccines for major human and livestock diseases such as Ebola, HIV, and bovine tuberculosis. So one innovative way that the Jenner Institute researchers are generating vaccines is through the use of virus-like particles, or VLPs. These are used for displaying poorly immunogenic antigens to boost the immune response. The VLP fusions are expressed in bacteria and viewed with negative staining on the TEM to check if they're forming particles, which they are, and they're of the right size. Here they should be about 32 nanometers. And now what the researchers can do that they know that everything's good with this sample, um, they can then test the immunogenicity in mice. So yay for TEM.